Today, on December 25th, 2022, I'm going to read to you the transcript of a video originally made by the channel of Abraham Hicks, spoken by Esther Hicks, with the title, March is here, now what, do this? For some reason, that video is deleted, but I found the transcript so interesting and valuable that I'm going to read it to you now, illustrated by photographs of myself. Here it goes. Knowing what you are wanting is more important than you know, you see. Your desire comes so easily to you that often you do not realize everything that has come before that. Because once you are in conscious awareness of your own desire, then the process of it turning from a conscious awareness to a full-blown manifestation is something that should delight you every step along the way. But sometimes, once you are consciously aware of a desire, if it doesn't feel to you that it is moving quickly enough, or surely enough, if you are uncertain about it, because you have beliefs that contradict your own desire, then there is a discord within you. It's like you got a desire vibration sometimes, in a belief vibration sometimes, and when they are clashing, when they are not the same, then there is discord within you. And that is in fact what every emotion that you feel is about. It's about the discord or the not discord. We can say it better. The alignment or not alignment. The allowing or not allowing. It's about allowing your desire or assisting your own desire. We've been talking to you about that in a variety of different ways for a number of years now. But what we want to give some emphasis to today, here and now, is what happened before that desire that you know you have became a conscious awareness to you. Because once you know you want it, that's not the beginning of your desire. The beginning of your desire was often knowing what you don't want, often living in contrast that caused you to want this to be better or want that to be better, or that to be better. So through the living of life, you've been molding the clay, so to speak. You've been sifting through the data of your life, and you have been in conscious awareness of what's going on around you. And you've been through this experience of sifting and sorting, knowing what you don't want. Therefore, knowing what you do want, You've been putting, we've been calling them, rockets of desire because they emanate from you vibrationally without you even really knowing that it is happening. So you've been emanating rockets of desire for a long, long time. Some of them were in place even before you came into this body and most of them are coming into place since you've been in this body. And so you've been asking and asking, asking and asking in such subtle ways, and sometimes not so subtle ways, until you have built or created or allowed to be created for you a vibrational version of a whole lot of desires. <coughs> it's almost like ingredients in a cake that you've been putting there a little bit flour, a little bit salt, and a little bit of eggs, a little bit of milk, of this, of that, until there is a vortex. We've been calling it a vortex of creation, a vibrational version of everything that you desire. But you would not recognize it in its mixed up form, because you've been putting it in there, ingredient by ingredient. You might remember the struggle you had with your mother and you dumped a whole bunch in there. 
You might be remembering a relationship with a girlfriend or a boyfriend where you dumped a lot. You might recall something that happened when you were younger and made you feel bad or even things that you saw, that you desired but you don't have, any real awareness just at the drop of a hat. What is actually going on in this vortex that's imperceptive to you sometimes? Now what we want you to realize is law of attraction. You've been hearing us and others talking about law of attraction and it has been amassing to this vibrational reality right now. You're really going to like this once we come to the end of this explanation so hang in there with us, just a little bit more. Right now we are just in the cake mixture. Law of attraction has been added into that too. So this vibrational reality, this vibrational version of what you are creating, is becoming more and more and more and more. And the question that we have for you, the question that we want you to begin asking yourself more, is as this vibrational version of you is becoming it's almost like the gestation period it's almost like the fetus growing in the womb it is this vibrational version that is coming into further and further larger and larger possibility for your awareness so it's growing and growing and the law of attraction is causing it to grow and we are talking about your desires, we are talking about your creation, and we are talking about what you have been putting there through the living of your life. We are talking about a very important basis of creation. It's getting more and more, and more and more, but now here's the question that we have for you. What is your mood today, right here, right now? What's your attitude? Are you joyful? Are you clear? Are you feeling appreciation? Are you ordinary? Are you feeling defeated? Are you feeling depressed about something? Because your mood, which indicates your vibrational state of being, which indicates your vibrational situation right here and now, how you feel what your mood is, is very important in relationship to you being receptive of what's bibbling and boiling over here in your vortex. So all of a sudden you say, oh, I have an idea, or oh boy, do I want that. When that desire occurs to you, like that, where it thrills you, where you know that you want that, or be that, or have that, when that happens, it means that all this work that you've done before, all this putting your ingredients into this vortex, all of this law of attraction and your inner being and source energy's response to it, all of this becoming, becoming and becoming. And now you somehow, some way, maybe you meditated, maybe you took a nice swim, maybe you've been walking on the beach, Maybe you were just basking in appreciation of something doesn't matter of how you got there. I read that again. And now somehow, some way, maybe you meditated, maybe you took a nice swim, maybe you've been walking on the beach, maybe you were just basking in appreciation of something. It doesn't matter how you got there. Somehow, some way, you got into what we are calling the receptive mode and you were the same vibrational frequency as what your vortex has become. And you realized for a moment, oh, I want this. But then so often, when you get practical, you're not, it seems, going to keep that alive because you're not used to being in that receptive mode. It just sort of caught you off guard when you were accidentally not being the negative person you usually are. 
just for a little while you were not complaining about something. You sort of forgot maybe it was first thing in the morning. Maybe the person you usually complain to wasn't available. <laughs> they weren't answering your texts or your phone calls. And so you weren't beating the drum of all of the beliefs that are keeping you from all the things that you want. You were actually accidentally or maybe deliberately, but probably accidentally, in the receptive mode, and oh, you got the idea. It feels so good to feel like that for a moment, doesn't it? So what we are wanting to talk to you about all day, every day, is how you can recognize that receptive mode when all the idea comes, and then spend more of your time getting the rest of your thoughts to not trample and kill that thought, to get yourself into the place where you allow this desire to be believed. By your talking into believing it a little bit at a time, by no longer beating the drum of the things that counteract it, that disapprove of it, or that disagree of it. So almost the first words that we spoke through Esther all those many years ago were, if you want something and believe it, then it is, in other words, if you have a desire and you are not contradicting it when you say, I want it, and instead of, I want it, but I want it, and I want it because I want it, that's so much different than, I want it. However, so as you bring all of that past reality, you see, you didn't come to face reality. Facing the reality that you've been living will deny the reality that you are creating. You didn't come to face reality, you come to create reality, to create reality. You are the creator of your own experience and you do it all day, every day through the thoughts that you think, through the words that you speak. So what you think matters a lot and you can't get away with negative commentary. You can't get away with those uncomfortable thoughts and statements and beliefs and allow what you really want to come into being. You were a non-physical energy before you came into this body, but you still are the largest part of your non-physical energy. And so as you come into this body, oh such a wonderful thing you've done, and you sift and sort and you create this vortex which is your future manifestations, but also, once you launch a rocket of desire, everything changes. You are adding to the expansion of the universe with every exposure to life that you are living. And so you are creating this vortex and law of attraction, and your inner being, your source, what you want to call God, is focused upon your expanded ideas, your expanded notions, your expanded ideals, your expanded desires. And so, once life causes you to ask for something, even if it's just a soft, gentle asking, that it's imperceptible to you, long term, your asking never stops being heard, and it becomes greater and greater until it's almost tangible. You can almost see it and hear it, and smell it and taste it and touch it, but you can't because it's still a vibrational version. And the thing that goes wrong, well, not wrong, no, not so, it's not wrong, nothing is ever wrong. The thing that goes, uh, no, it's not wrong. The thing that you do that prevents you from having all of the rightness that you want and deserve is that as you stand in vibrational relationship to your new desire, Often because what you're observing, what you're observing doesn't show you what you want. In the absence of what you can see and hear and smell and taste and touch, you doubt and when you doubt you disallow your desire to turn into reality. Some years ago Jerry was talking, talked about it for a long time. Esther and Abraham are doing it now. A book called Turning Thoughts to Things. And the reason that Jerry wanted others to understand is because he had noticed from his own life experience that if he could find a desire 
and he could somehow keep it alive, that it would become a tangible reality. He wrote a paper many years ago, and the title of this, his paper was Keep your ideas to yourself until they are fully developed. Because he noticed so many people, those that he was counseling about financial matters, that when they wanted something and they began to speak to others who doubted their ability to accomplish it, they would undermine their confidence by forcing them to focus upon the reality that they were currently living. Like, what makes you think you could do something like that? When all you've ever done is something like this. In my case, people told me, you're far too old to do this. You're silly. Which, of course, didn't stop me. And what we want you to understand, if it is in your vortex and it is there, so much in there will keep you busy for lifetimes. If it is in your vortex and if you have found a moment here, in a moment here, where you are not in disharmony with what's in your vortex, as your vortex becomes stronger and stronger by the non-physical focus upon it, and we want you to know there is non-physical focus upon it once the idea comes to you. Most of it is already done once the idea occurs to you. It is so close to physical fruition. If you would just stop doing that thing you do that doesn't let it become. And that thing you do is think in opposition to it by facing the reality where it isn't yet. That it's like saying, I'm going to get in my car tomorrow and I'm going to drive down to San Diego. And meanwhile, the whole time, you're not in San Diego, screaming at yourself in disgust and dismay at the fact that you're not yet where you intended to be in your own mind. Damn me, I'm just not good at this. I wanted to be in San Diego and look at me. I'm still in Long Beach. I'm still in Long Beach. What's wrong with me? It's probably my mother's fault. She didn't do me right. It's probably not good in a past life. And now I'm being punished. And what we want you to understand is that there is this delicious process, this delicious process of your thoughts becoming a thing you get to watch. The entire universe comes into cooperation with you to uh, accomplish anything that you desire. There is nothing that is off limits for you. If this time space reality has a wherewithal to feel your vortex and become a dream or an idea or a desire within you, it is our absolute promise that this is time-space reality. It has the. It is our absolute promise that this time, space reality has the wherewithal to deliver the goods. But you have to stay in harmony with your own desire. We have nothing more to say, to you or anyone else, ever. This reading is done on December 25th, 2022. Today on December 25th, 2022.